to where they were when they left that field in Tampa Bay in the playoff game. And they had questions about Jalen Hurts, whether or not he could be the franchise quarterback. Now, you come through this season, Jalen Hurts was an MVP candidate, probably should have won the MVP if he doesn't get hurt. Now, Jalen Hurts is the franchise quarterback. So from a, a standpoint where they're trying to figure out who their quarterback is going forward, absolute success. From a standpoint of you look at where they were during the season, Hey, how, how much progress they made going into the playoffs as the number one seed? Absolutely a success. But at the end of the day, Stephen A. Smith, when you play a competitive sport and there is one winner and there is a loser, I don't know how you can say that the team that lost ultimately had a successful year because there's only one successful team in professional sports, whether that's Major League Baseball, pro football, pro basketball, especially when you look at the season that they had this year. They were the number one seed in the NFC, and they lost. First of all, you're wrong on a multitude of levels, Booger McFarlane, but I'm going to say this to you, my brother. See, this is the mistake that people like you make. You don't understand. You understand what I'm saying? That I'm a fan. You see, I watched Booger McFarlane, Monday Night Football. I watched him college, co covering colleges. I saw you covering colleges on ABC. I saw you Monday Night Countdown. I mean, you've been all over the place. I've watched you on many occasions, Booger McFarlane. Tell a national audience. Excuse me, just because you didn't win the championship doesn't mean you didn't have a successful season. It's based on the premise of your expectations. Coming into the season, what were you projected to be? What were they talking about as it pertained to you? You've been on many occasions. There were teams that didn't end up as champions. You classified their season as successful, but suddenly you engage in the selective amnesia and telling me from a generic perspective that those who don't win the championship have failed? That's not the Boogie McFarlane I've been listening to for years. That's not the brother I've been talking to. Now, I understand that you're in Florida, and when you're in Florida right now collecting that sunshine, I'm sorry. You win it? I think you win it. I think you win it. You ain't in Southern California, but you in Florida. You win it. I think you win it big time. Come on now. Son, Derek Carr is a free agent. At some point, Aaron Rodgers will, will emerge with a decision for Green Bay and then this is the time where Burrow gets paid and Herbert gets paid and those teams are now going to have to figure out how to win championships with their contracts being of market value for in the quarterback market Hurts is due for a contract and then there's always what's going on with Lamar Jackson Wh which domino do you see tumbling first here Mike well I mean Derek Carr gets a head start on the open market he's available to sign with anyone right now Aaron Rodgers can't be traded until the league year begins. Now, they could work it all out ahead of time. Right. And none of the free agents are available. Lamar Jackson can't be in a position to even discuss anything with another team until free agency. And first, we have to see whether or not the Ravens apply the franchise tag. I assume they will. I don't think they'll work out a long-term deal. And then the question is, will it be the exclusive tag or the non-exclusive tag? Non-exclusive lets him go out and shop himself to other teams and look for that five-year fully guaranteed Deshaun Watson type structure. But Rich, one thing that, that I continue to advocate, and I feel like the time for it has come, and maybe Joe Burrow is the one to get it because maybe Mike Brown, the owner of the Bengals, is sufficiently willing to go against what the league wants teams to do. I think one of these quarterback contracts needs to be tied to a percentage of the salary cap. Long-term, X percent, 13, 14, 15, 16 percent, you have certainty not in dollars, but you have certainty in percentage of dollars, the cents on the dollar that go to your quarterback and the rest that's available for the rest of your team. Because there's a balance to be struck. And Jalen Hurts, I think, is going to be the next big test of this because he could push for $45 million or more. Will he do that? Will he put the team in a position – where they've got less money available to put talent around him. Will he take the Peyton Manning approach, which was basically, it's my job to maximize my income, it's your job to manage the salary cap. And players get put in this very difficult position, and Sims and I were talking about this today on PFT Live. Mm -hmm. The owners love it, because the fans never say, hey, owners, you're doing just fine. Hey, owners, you need to figure this out. Hey, owners, you need to take care of these highly talented players that we are showing up to watch and tuning in to watch and deserve to get more. While you all get plenty, and you're riding around in your $300 million yachts, you guys need to pony up and pay. Mahomes is the one who should be the highest paid player in football, and he'll never ask for it, but he should be. I think the best way to get toward that path 
is to tie it to a percentage of the cap, and the best quarterbacks get that percentage, and as the cap goes up, their pay goes up, and however high the cap goes, that's how high their pay goes. And I think Burrow, I'm not saying he will, but Burrow may be in the best position to pull it off of any of the great quarterbacks we've seen. Some have tried. Darrell Revis tried, couldn't do it. Kirk Cousins tried, couldn't do it. One of these days, someone's going to do it. And once we cross that bridge, hopefully it won't be an aberration like the Watson deal. Hopefully it'll be a sign of things to come because of all players on the field, the quarterback deserves that percentage. Well, I'm glad you mentioned the Watson deal because as of right now, despite, you know, or, or in lieu of your, your, your theory there, what, what, uh, what players are going to go for, um, it, it's the Watson let's get every dollar guaranteed that, that, as we all know, has held up whatever's going on in Baltimore from being a long time relationship with Lamar Jackson and the Ravens a- anybody else do you see do you see the Watson deal uh roosting again this year in a, in a way that it did not for Kyler in Arizona and Russ in Denver and you, what are you thinking what are you hearing on that front Mike? I think the fact that neither Russell Wilson nor Kyler Murray got five years fully guaranteed draws a circle around Watson as an outlier okay and the way Watson pulled it off, and this is one of the benefits of having an agent if you're Lamar Jackson. It's not just go negotiate the best possible contract. An agent explains to Lamar how Deshaun Watson got his five-year fully guaranteed contract, how he was able to convince the Texans to trade him, how he was able to lure four teams to the table to try to persuade him to choose them, how he was able to shrug the Browns to the side at the perfect time after they pissed off Baker Mayfield and they got desperate and they felt like they had to make a big move to get Deshaun Watson's attention again and swung back around with that five-year fully guaranteed contract. There's a lot of planets that got to line up to get yourself in that spot, and it worked for Deshaun Watson. It's going to be hard for Lamar Jackson to do it, and what he's basically going to have to do if the Ravens use that non-exclusive franchise tag, he's just got to say, hey, anybody out there, if you're interested this is what I want. Let's see if somebody shows up. And I don't know that somebody's going to show up. All it takes is one team. But after the blowback the Browns got last year, it's going to take a lot, I think, to get a team to give up five years fully guaranteed and two first-round draft picks, which is what would be required if you make Lamar Jackson an offer that he accepts and the Ravens don't match it. And I, I'm, I'll be fascinated to see if somebody does it because the league, the powers that be, that, that. Now, you look at the Philadelphia Eagles. We didn't know Jalen Hurts was going to be this good. We didn't know he was going to be a top two MVP candidate, clearly the most improved player, clearly one of the top five or six quarterbacks in the National Football League, although I'd put him higher at this particular moment in time because his ability to run with the football, not just pass it. We saw the dimes that he was throwing in the Super Bowl. We saw a defense that was one of the top defenses in the National Football League that had 70 sacks. They wet the bed in the second half. They got some making up to do for that, but we get that. We we saw four different dudes record more than 11 sacks. We saw this kid, Hassan Reddick, drop 16 and a yeah. half sacks. Okay, Fletcher Cox was on the back end with just seven for crying out loud. We saw them get to the passer. We saw a secondary that was suspect but still played effectively for most of the season. With Jalen Hurts behind center, they went 14 and one. They won the NFC East. They won the NFC. They went to the Super Bowl, okay, and Cam was tied 35-35 with just a couple of minutes left. I'm just saying, there's a lot yeah, to look at. Yeah, I get at. all that. There's, there's a lot to look at. Now, there if is. you said, Now, if you said the Eagles are definitely winning the Super Bowl, and that was the expectation, and then they lost, that's different. But coming into the season, we didn't say that because we didn't know what the hell we were going to see from Jalen Hurts. The Booger McFarlane, I know brings that up and says, based on that, they've exceeded expectations and this season should be classified as a success. That's the book of McFarlane, I know. Here's the thing I'll say, and you know, I watch you often, and especially when it concerns the NBA, because I think you're an aficionado when it comes to the NBA. And when you look at certain teams at the end of the season, a la Boston or Milwaukee, that have the best record, Yep. and they get it in the Eastern Conference playoffs, or they even make it to the finals and they don't win, you don't classify their season as a success. You don't that's classify not, their hold, season hold, 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 as these guys are successful. It's, hold, a, let me, it, let me, it, let it's about that. winning the championship, Steve. Let me so how, that. How, you gonna, how, how you going to have that for, no. for, for, for the NBA, but then I when it comes to the NFL, you're you going to oh, look no. at it differently. No, I can prove it. I can okay, prove it. Come on. Last year, last year okay. Boston made it to the finals. 
I didn't say the season was a failure because I didn't expect them initially to make it to the finals. Now, if I said they're going to make it to the finals and they're going to win it, and then they came up short, I would have classified it as a failure. But because I didn't project that they were going to the finals when they made the finals but lost, I didn't term their season a, a failure. I